This is Dr. James Marion welcoming all of you once again to our third Thursday live broadcast from the Susan and Leonard Feinstein Inflammatory Bowel Disease Center here at Mount Sinai Medical Center in New York City. And today we have a very, very special guest. Today we have uh, one of our younger superstars in IBD. It's Michael Dolinger, MD. He also has an MBA, which so keep an eye on him. Uh, our Advanced Pediatric Inflammatory Bowel Disease Fellow uh, here at Mount Sinai. Uh, and welcome, Michael. Thank you for having me. So excited to be here. It's great. So Michael is going to be discussing with us today intestinal ultrasound that can actually be done in real time at the IBD Center. And it's really, this is so new that I really was shocked to see Michael roaming the halls of the IBD center, performing these tests on these patients. And well, Michael, I mean, that's pretty awesome. It got in there without me even knowing it was happening. So great. Yeah, the, the tests are so fast that uh, a lot of times I have the results before people even know they're done. So it's, it's amazing. So yeah, so Michael, you know, again, for our audience, let's start with the basics. You know, what exactly is intestinal ultrasound and how are you using it in the inflammatory bowel disease center? Yeah, so that, this is your traditional transabdominal ultrasound with a probe placed on the patient's belly that we use to look at the bowel wall. And what we can do in the IBD center during a clinic visit within a 10 minute time frame is look to see if there are signs of inflammation in the bowel wall just by placing a probe on the patient's belly and using specific parameters for inflammatory bowel disease that really make it high definition to the patient, to the provider, it's amazing. So this is a 10 minute test and it's, it's pretty great, right? So, I mean, I'm hearing advantages already just in your description, but tell me in our audience a little bit more about how this is different than let's say an MR enterography or a CAT scan. Sure, so there are a lot of benefits over other imaging modalities. So we talked about the speed, but also the preparation. So there's no fasting. You don't have to have nothing to eat or drink before an ultrasound. There's no contrast. So there's nothing that you have to drink for the ultrasound like you would for an MRI. There's nothing that paralyzes the bowel that makes you feel uncomfortable. I'll often have patients say they would rather a colonoscopy than an MRI or an MR enterography because of the contrast. That doesn't exist with ultrasound. You uh, don't have any IV there, you know, that's a big benefit for children is there's no phlebotomy, there's no IV needed, is that we can do it no matter if you think you need it immediately in the visit to assess for inflammation, or we can do it in a planned visit, there's no need to prep in advance. So this is a big advantage over other modalities of imaging. And if, could you comment for, you know, let's say the typical patient, you know, is coming in and I know with pediatric patients, it's, you know, Pediatric IBD is not the same as adult IBD in many, many different ways, but let's say a typical patient coming in, in terms of the sensitivity and specificity for picking up inflammation, let's say in the, in the distal ileum where you know, you're worried about Crohn's disease, for example, compared to these other tests. Yeah, so there's a great study uh, that was done a couple of years ago, published out of the UK, in which they randomized patients and they did an ultrasound and an MRI prospectively. So they took them at before they were gonna have it. And they said, you are gonna get an MRI. You are also gonna get an ultrasound at the same time. And we're gonna compare in the distal ileum at the end of the small intestine, which is a better test for inflammation. And they found that MRI was 97% sensitive for picking up inflammation in the small intestine. And ultrasound was 92% sensitive. So yes, MRI was slightly better, but not statistically. And they were both really, really good for picking up inflammation at the end of the small intestine. And so you say, if I have to schedule with a radiologist, do a contrast study, it's expensive there. And certain people may not like going in MRI machines, or I can do a 10 minute test in the office that sacrifices a small amount of sensitivity. I like the test that's in the office that sacrifices. Yeah. That's pretty, that's pretty remarkable. So, you know, I, I want to get a better sense and I'm hope, hoping we can sort of demonstrate to the audience, maybe you could share your screen. Um, 
what you look for. What does it look like? What what is the machine like? How is how does this work? Sure. So I'm going to share my screen. I have a patient uh, who this is a, a young boy who we have consent from uh, the mother and uh, him. They were very excited and wanted to be part of the Facebook Live. He wants to be famous. Uh, so he was uh, super excited. Uh, you may not see his face in the video, but this is a clip of me performing an ultrasound uh, and showing him uh, how it actually goes. I'm going to hit play here. So you can see uh, just a regular probe on his abdomen. And you can see I turn the screen to him so he can see the results in real time as I talk through it. This is not me conveying after. This is he sees what I'm seeing as I'm doing it. Wow. And so it's really great. And I'm going to show you what we actually see on the ultrasound. So this is a picture of the ultrasound, the end of the small intestine. And the way I explain it to patients is that we look for thickness or swelling. And then we look for black and blue. Like you bang your knee or your elbow, it gets swollen in black and blue. The red and blue is like black and blue and a sign of inflammation. And I'll play this clip to show you what it looks like in real time. Ooh, we'll just go back. Let me hit play, not end the slideshow. And so you can see this really creates a shared understanding of, wow, I have a lot of inflammation in the end of my small intestine. I need to change treatment. I need to do something. This image is worth a thousand words and it's really great for patients. So I'm going to unshare my screen. Um, and that's what we see in a visit. So, this is really quite remarkable. And, and again, I'm, I'm familiar with the technique and, and the images are really quite vivid. And what's amazing to me is that these images get to you in real time, uh, which is a lot better than waiting a few days for an MR enterography or a CAT scan and you know without the radiation of the CAT scan, obviously. So who, who specifically do you think would benefit? What type of patients is this test really meant for? Yeah, so the ultrasound is great for certain patients, and I would say most patients, and those were with Crohn's disease and with ulcerative colitis. You can see the entire colon except for the rectum. So for patients with limited proctitis or limited rectal disease, not a great test for, but if they develop symptoms and you look to see if there's disease extension into the colon, this is a great test to say, okay, it's just limited to my rectum. Maybe we could do some rectal therapy. And for patients with Crohn's with really distal small bowel inflammation, ileal Crohn's disease, or even some colon involvement, this is a great test for. We can't see higher up in the small intestine, but, uh, and so it would be a limitation for those patients where maybe a capsule endoscopy or an MRI may be a better test. And so really knowing that for, uh, you know, it's a great test for the large majority of patients. Well, this is such an innovation and I, I just see so many advantages. Um, and, you know, really thanks to you, Michael, for getting this going. Um, you know, uh, you worry that a machine of this uh, type would just sit around and gather dust in a corner, but you're using it. And um, I think really benefiting our patients as a result. So kudos to you. Um, so it's got all of these obvious advantages. I mean, do you see other centers uh, picking this up, other IBD centers? I mean, with all of these advantages? Yeah, it, it is really becoming quickly popular. It does take a lot to train and to learn how to use it to make decisions. So like any procedural skill, you have to do it over and over and uh, you have to have guidance from people who are experts in the field. So it does take a while, but we already started to train uh, one center in the Northeast and another in the Midwest is actually coming next week uh, to learn, uh, bringing multiple providers from their institution. Um, and so it's, I think, and there's uh, California as well. So I think everyone is going to slowly really bring this to different parts of the country and that's how it will pick up adoption very quickly. Well, Michael, this is amazing to hear. And this is what Sinai is about, this type of innovation and then and then spreading it around, right? Uh, and who knows, you might even be able to teach this old dog this new trick at some point. I, I, think that's, uh, I think that's the hope, is that everyone will incorporate this into their care for their patients at some point. And I'm very excited to help that and you know, make that dream a reality. 
Listen, this is just, it's been great having you. Uh, this is Dr. James Marion uh, with the third Thursday at the Susan and Leonard Feinstein Inflammatory Bowel Disease Center in, uh, in New York City, Mount Sinai Medical Center uh, with Michael Dollinger, MD, uh, the Advanced Pediatric Inflammatory Bowel Disease Fellow here at Mount Sinai. And Michael, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. And we'll see you all next month. Uh, and please enjoy the rest of your summer safely. Thank you.